In South Asia, a child started coming to an Awana Bible Club. This child's parents were not followers of Jesus, but they were intrigued by what they saw and heard in their child's life. Gajendra Tamang tells the story. And one day her mom got sick. And then she goes to mom and asks, Mom, can I pray for you? And mom said, yeah. So this little girl prayed for or her mom with faith in God and she is healed. Wow. And this mom, now she's interested to, yes. to know more about yeah. her faith. Where, where did you learn how and to I pray know. like that? And now she started coming to church. Wow. And she became a believer. And then, then after that, her husband, she brought her husband, and then the whole family. Wow. So, but it started with this with one, one child. 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 Jesus never promised his followers an easy path. In fact, he told his disciples that the world would hate them. He sent them out as sheep among wolves. Jesus' words came true in the life of the apostles, and they're still coming true today in the lives of his followers around the world. Join host Todd Nettleton as we hear their inspiring stories and learn how we can help right now on the Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network. Welcome again to the Voice of the Martyrs Radio. My name is Todd Nettleton. We are in the studio today in Bartlesville, Oklahoma with Gajendra Tamang. He is the leader for South Asia for the organization called Awana. And we're going to talk about what they do, particularly in South Asia. Gajendra, welcome to Voice of the Martyrs Radio. Thank you. Let's start at the beginning. What is, what is your story of coming to faith in Christ? When I was studying in a college in India, one of my classmates was Christian, and he would always ask me to go to his church. Then I realized that it's been already a year that he kept on asking me to go to his church. So finally I decided to go to his church just to find out why he likes it so much. Wow. So that's how I started attending this church when I went to the church first time. I did not understand anything. So, but I liked the music. I enjoyed the music. So I started attending this church, and after attending the church for a few months, so finally I accepted Jesus as my personal savior. And it happened at the same time that my dad went to Nagaland, which is another state of India. He heard the gospel there, and he became a Christian there. Wow! So, so my whole family became Christian. That was in. 1993. I hope that encourages our listeners, though, to keep on asking, keep on inviting, keep on bringing up that subject. How did you first come into contact with Awana and with the work that Awana is doing? My wife told me that she always had a desire to go to a Bible seminary. So we decided to go to seminary in India. We went there, a new, newly married couple, and as we went there, we found out there was a orphan home uh, attached to the seminary in the same compound. They started Awana. So since it was a big club, they were looking for more Awana leaders. They needed help. So we were their Awana leaders throughout this time, whole time when we were in the seminary from 96 to 99. So you came from Nepal to go to seminary in India mm -hmm. and then moved back to Nepal after seminary? Yeah, in 1999, we graduated, and then the national director of Awana India, he asked us a question, what is your plan after the graduation? Uh, would you like to become a Awana missionary? So this is how we started praying about it. And then finally, my wife and I thought it came out of nowhere. So maybe it's a God's calling. So finally, we decided to become Awana missionary, came back to Nepal, uh, as a Awana missionary in July 1999. And so what what did you do? Like, like, what did you do on a daily basis as an Awana missionary? Were you working in an Awana club yourself? Were you kind of leading others who were leading clubs, or, or how did that work? Yeah, as an Awana missionary, we helped the local churches to start Awana clubs. So we serve the local churches. Mm -hmm. We train their leaders. And then these leaders go back and start Awana clubs. Basically, as a Awana missionary, we start with the pastors. 
So we bring pastors from 30 to 40 churches together in one place, and we talk about the urgency of reaching the kids, the young people, and we remind them, if we don't disciple them, then the world is going to disciple them. So we need to be very intentional about discipling the next generation. So we challenge them, can we dream to have a godly generation? Can we do something, you know? It will not happen by itself. So the pastors get it. They said, yeah, we, we got it. Then they ask the question, what is the solution? Yeah, what do we do? What do you do? So they say, say, okay, here is the solution. So you can start a WANA. So how do we do that? You go back, you recruit two leaders, you send them back for a seed planters training. It's a three to four days training. And we're going to invest in the lives of these two leaders. We'll do three-month follow-up. We'll do one-year follow-up. And they will become the trainer. So after the seed planters training, they go back and they train the other Awana leaders from their church. And they start Awana within a month after the seed planters training. And then we do follow-up with these two leaders, three-month follow-up, one-year follow-up. So we really equip and empower these two leaders. Mm -hmm. They are the one who are disciple maker. Mm -hmm. So we train the disciple makers. We're talking this week on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with Gajendra Tamang. He is the regional director for Awana in South Asia, overseeing more than 23,000 weekly clubs, ministering to more than 1.2 million children. Gajendra, as I say those numbers, that's huge. Uh, but one of the things that comes to my mind as I kind of mentally go through the map of South Asia you're working in places where Christians are persecuted. Mm -hmm. you're, you're working in Pakistan and India and Nepal and Bangladesh. These are places where not everybody's happy that you have an Awana club mm -hmm. and that kids are coming to know Jesus. How do you deal with that or how do you work around that or how do you kind of fly under the radar so that you don't end up really facing persecution head on? We work through the local judges. And we are always trying to be the better servant of the local churches. So it is the local church who is reaching these kids. Right. They are leaders. We are just empowering them. We are serving them. So it's always the local church is in the front that, that they are discipling the next generation. And do they ever come to you worried about, hey, if we start inviting the Muslim children to come to Awana, we're going to have trouble. We're going to have, you know, we're going to face pressure. Do they worry about that? Or are they just like, hey, that's part of serving the Lord in South Asia. So we're going to do it. Yeah. It's uh, their people. It's their passion for the gospel. So they are the one who are facing all these persecutions. In, in every Awana clubs, I would say 20 to 25 percent of those kids are from non-Christian wow. families. Wow. And some kids, they just came there because their friend invited them. Most of the time, it's the kids at Awana. Uh -huh. They invite their friends. Hey, come on. Come, come on. We'll have <laughs> a fun time. Way, the same way somebody invited you. Yeah. Come on. We'll have a fun time. And some of the families, you know, they do not know that their kids are attending Awana, you know. And they, when they find out, some of the families, they say, okay, you're not going to Awana. But some of the kids, they are allowed to come there. So parents, they said, it's better for you to be there in the church than playing in the mud. So parents, they, maybe you're learning something good. You just go. You right. Know, they allow them. As a parent, if you're blessing my children, I'm probably going to be okay with that. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, like yeah. It's, it's hard to come against someone who is obviously blessing your children. When that pushback happens, though, because I know sometimes it does, uh -huh. is it typically enough for the parent to say, no, son, no, daughter, you, you're not allowed to go there mm -hmm. anymore? Mm -hmm. Or do they come to the church and say, hey, my child is a Muslim, my child is a Hindu. Why did you let them in this club? No, the parents usually, they don't come to us because these kids were invited by the other kids. So, so they don't necessarily blame the church. church yeah. They just say, hey. You're not going. Okay. You know? We don't want you to go. And again, we have some kids, even after that, they love so much Awana, they come secretly. They come anyway. Some kids even, they walk for two hours, 
one wow. hours to get to the Awana club. So still they come. You tell the pastors, hey, we want to reach the next generation. We want to help your church reach the next yeah. generation. Do you ever have pastors that, that aren't interested that say, oh, I'm too busy with the grownups. I, you know, I don't have time to worry about the children. Do you ever get that response or no? no? Not really. Good. Not really. In fact, we have many testimonies that right in that pastor conference, some of the pastors were crying there. They confess that we did not do the right thing in the past. We never thought about these children, you know. We never considered them as a people. Uh -huh. So now they say, now from here onwards, they are not future church, they are the present church. Amen. So we are going to minister to these kids. We are going to intentionally disciple them. We are going to train the parents how to disciple their own children because they are the present church. Amen. Yeah. So when you then, you take two leaders out of that church and you say, okay, we're going to train you. Did you say three days of training? Yeah. It's in the cities, we do three days. If it is in the village, we do four days. Okay. Yeah. And what are some of the things, like what does that training look like? Well, the, the training would be, first thing would be the vision casting. Why? Why do you want to do this? It is, yes. <laughs> so so now they, now they feel the urgency of discipling the next generation. All the pressure now we have, the load we have in this world, you know, it's, you know, if we don't disciple them intentionally, there is more chances that we may lose them. Yeah. yeah. So, so we really need to disciple them before the age of 14 and 15. That's a critical age to disciple a person. It doesn't mean that there is no chances, there is no hope. We, we can still, people come to Christ in even in 15 years, 25 years, 70 years, so at any ages. Mm -hmm. But this first, you know, window we call it. So, I mean, we remind them that there is a book by George Berna here in the United States. Yes. It's called a Spiritual Champion. So these books talks about, you know, they did a survey. And they found out that, the, you know, 80% of the Christian in the United States came to Christ before the age of 14. Right. And then it also says that 90% of the missionaries came to Christ before the age of 14. Wow. So that means if we don't raise these kids in the future, we will not have missionary. So, so the so we and then they get it. They say, "Oh yeah, this is so this important. Is important. This is so important." And then the next thing what we do is uh, we remind them that it's a God-given responsibility for all the parents. So, and we remind them that children are included in the Great Commission. So they are not outside of the Great Commission. They need to hear the gospel. Mm -hmm. And even if they are born in a Christian family, they need to be saved. So, and then we talk about how do we start Awana. Right. The, and how do we run Awana? Begin, how do you run Awana? And so, so it's all about how to disciple these kids. And then we have two opportunities disciple these kids who come to Awana from Christian family. The second would be, how do we reach the parents uh, that they are sending their kids there, but they are not Christian. Right. So we, we teach them, we, we train them how to do that. And because they are trainer, we also train them how to train the other leaders. Mm -hmm. So they have to become a trainer. <laughs> so once they leave, they have to go back and train the other Awana leaders. So we, we just, uh, you know, in these three, four days, uh, we help them to become a trainer. That's a lot to accomplish in a short amount of time. Yeah, but we do three-month follow-up. Uh -huh. We do nine-month follow-up. We do one-year follow-up. So there is a... So there's know, a way to come back and say, hey, how's it going? Yeah. What do, what do we need to keep working on? Yeah. And then also like one-year follow-up, we hear the testimonies, you know, what is the impact, what's happening, you know. Um, 
So what, some, what are some of the testimonies you've heard recently? I, I would well, love to hear these. Sure. Yeah. Some of them will say that we we started with, you know, 20 kids. Now we have over 50 kids within a year. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. And now, so, now we need more workers. We, yeah. <laughs> and some of them will say, this little child, she has been attending Awana. She's from a non-Christian family. And one day her mom got sick. And then she goes to mom and asks, mom, can I pray for you? And mom said, yeah. So this little girl prayed for or her mom with faith in God and she is healed. Wow. And this mom, now she's interested to, yes. to know more about <laughs> yeah. her faith. Where, where did you learn how and to I pray know. like that? And now she started coming to church. Wow. And she became a believer. And then, then after that, her husband, she brought her husband, and then the whole family. Wow. So, but it started with this with one, one child. child. So these are some of the testimonies they share, you know. And sometimes it's like... We have a church here, and we train two leaders from this church. But they said, there was another village, and only one family was there who were coming to their church. So it was a long distance for that family. So they decided to, to start Awana in that village with that one family. So it was not a church, but just, just Awana, play games. And then slowly, you know, kids attracted. And then slowly the other families, and they said, now we have planted another church in, it's not a church, but at least a fellowship. Yeah. So few families. So so now they are planting a daughter churches. Using Awana as the, as the door opener. Oh, yeah. Wow. I know one of the focuses of Awana is on scripture memorization. Yeah. We have an Awana club at my church. I, I know that's mm -hmm. part of it. How does that affect, especially children who are coming not out of a Christian background? They've come from a Muslim background. They've come from a Hindu background. How does that scripture memorization part of the process impact them? Yeah, I mean, as I said, that the, just I just shared the, the story of this little girl. She loves memorizing the scripture, and she memorized the scripture when back at home. Mm -hmm. And then we have some other stories— in some cases, where when the parents, they heard that the kids is memorizing the scripture, they stop sending them to the club or right. to the church. But we also have a story where these parents started hearing the word of God. And after some time, you know, they started thinking about this verse that the, the you know, child is it's saying. Saying again and again and again. again yeah. And, and they also observed, they noticed that there is a difference in this child life. The child is not the same anymore. So now there is a curiosity. They wanted to know more about mm -hmm. this Bible verse they heard. So they started coming to church. And the kids, some of the kids, they are attracted by the games, but some of the kids, they're attracted by these memory verses. They wanted to memorize it. Mm -hmm. They recite it. Eventually, after a few years, they, they give a testimony that now I was just reciting, memorizing without knowing the, the power of that Bible verse. Now that Bible has changed my life. Wow. And, yeah. That Bible has changed my life. I, I hope all of us can say that, that, that the Bible has changed our lives. It seems like this would spread very easily. Mm -hmm. Because you're training leaders, they're training leaders. leaders. The church sees very quickly, wow, this is powerful. This is helping us grow. This is helping us disciple. I is that the case, that it just kind of spreads out all over wherever it goes? That's what's happening. That's what's happening. And, like, the church is growing in that part of the world. So we train the mother church. And this mother church is going to plant another seven or nine daughter churches in two, three years of time. And this mother church is going to train all those nine churches. They have leaders. Awana programs. They, they have each Awana, one. each one of them. So for us now, it's not Awana. It's all about, can we disciple one more child? 
can we dream to have a godly generation who love God and who serve God? You know, we know that. So once these kids start loving God, then they will start serving God. So uh, that's our dream. That's our hope. That's our prayer. And the parents, they see a difference in the lives of these kids. Oh, yeah. Because Bible, the scripture has the power to transform the lives of any people, including children, Amen. including kids. Amen. Yeah. What's the most difficult part of, of your job? The government is more strict in that part of the world. They're trying to control uh, or they're trying to make things difficult for the Christians. And everywhere I go, I, I say I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. And then they start looking at me in a different way you know, right. once they know that I'm a Christian. Because in their mind, they hear <laughs> troublemaker or bad influence or some Co of those things. Converting people. Converting people, people yeah. yeah. That's the main thing. They have. So they think that as if I'm attacking somebody's religion. You mm -hmm. know, that's the thing. Well, I love, you know, as you talked about in the beginning, that you go to come alongside the local church, mm -hmm. and you're just there to help them and yeah. help support them and encourage them and, and equip them. I think that's a beautiful model for ministry uh, to just come alongside the church that's already there. We have a lot of listeners to VOM Radio who are prayer warriors, and how can they pray for the work of Awana in South Asia? How can they pray for you and your family? Uh, in the work that you're doing? I feel like this is a God's timing. We have a huge opportunity to disciple the next generation. We have a lot of children and young people in that part of the world. So when I look at them, I always ask the question, actually, you know, when I go to heaven, how many of them will be in heaven, you know, if I get to see them? So please pray for the salvation of the young generation, that they are coming and attending Awana, being disciple now, and also the kids that are not in the Awana program, that they might be saved. That's our heart desire, mm -hmm. always. And we need more workers because harvest is plenty. For right. Them. So play for all the Awana leaders who are working in the front line, uh, that they may become a better disciple maker. Pray that all these kids will grow as a resilient disciple of Jesus. I just imagine, I get excited, what it look like if all these 1.2 million kids who are attending Awana become a resilient disciple Amen. in next 20 years, or maybe 15 years. Mm -hmm. After 10 years, some of them will be in their 20s and 30s. And what if they become a strong disciple of Jesus. It's going to change the whole nation. Yep. So please pray for the salvation of those peoples. Pray for our honor leaders. Pray for all the Awana volunteers and especially all the Awana team members who are working in different parts of the countries. And also pray for the believers, the churches, that they would be able to face the persecution that they're going through. It's not everywhere. Mm -hmm. It depends on which part of the country you are. Some of them are going through persecution. Some of the churches are not going through persecution, but this is the time to pray for all the churches, especially those who are facing the persecution. Yeah. God give them strength to face this persecution. Amen. We've been talking this week on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with Gajendra Tamang. He is the regional director for Awana in South Asia. As he mentioned, he oversees more than 23,000 weekly Awana clubs ministering to more than 1.2 million children. Uh, an amazing reach for the ministry. Gajendra, thank you for your heart. Thank you for sharing with us this week on Voice of the Martyrs Radio. You're welcome. It has been such an honor to have you. And if you are just now joining us, thank you for listening this week. If you're just joining us, you'll want to go online to vomradio.net. You can hear this whole conversation again. As well, you can send a link to someone else. You may want to send it to the Awana leader in your church, send it to your pastor, send it to another Christian friend who will help you pray for God's work in South Asia, especially reaching the next generation there with the gospel, raising up biblical disciples who are ready to follow Jesus no matter the cost. I hope you'll pray for that this week, and I hope you'll be back with us next week right here 
on the Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network.